Timare Martin, the wonder kid from Taharoa. So, like, what's the best thing about Brisbane, Queensland? Um, oh, it's close to the beach. Yeah. Goldie's just, just down the road, so that's pretty good. Not, not too busy, but busy enough to, you know, still do stuff, restaurants and all that. I've noticed a lot of people around here wearing NRL jerseys and um, kind of getting the feeling that league is massive over here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge here, bro. Like, it's hard to even find some of the rugby games on TV, you know, it's all, it's all league. How's it going, bro? Oh, you want to find it? Oh, yeah, sweet. Oh, you want me to take it, bro? Yeah, mate. So you Pretty always cool. get hit up for autographs or? Yeah, uh, probably not, not, not me so much, <laughs> more, more, the big, more the big dogs. Sweet. Yeah, your photo's there, bro. Thanks, bro. Joe, what, what made you come back to NRL? For Te Maire, the NRL has been one hell of a ride. Tamare Martin has scored a grand final try. Back away, it goes out for Martin to score at the boom. What a try on the boom to Tamare Martin. His debut was regarded as one of the great ones, but only a few years later, at just 23, Te Maire made the shock announcement that his career was over because of a brain injury. To 55 first grade games and four for his country, the next chapter starts early. Tributes from teammates flowed for Cowboy number 266. You know, the first diagnosis two or three years ago, what was it? Was it like you can't play ever again or it's a high risk? It was, it was a question mark. They didn't know when I could be back because it was such a, it was such yeah. a rare injury. You know, if, if, if I got whacked in the back of the head, um, and I had that bleed, you know, they just say, don't get whacked in the back of the head again, but because yeah. there was no, you know, they went through all the tapes and everything and there was no major hit to the head, they couldn't really put their finger on it. And it was sort of, I rested the rest of that year, didn't do anything and, you know, I had half a year off and then went back to pre-season and the running and stuff was good and then I got back into the contact and my first contact session, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I got back, back to the start again, I got the mad yeah. um, migraines and headaches and stuff, so, um, once that happened, they, they, they weren't too sure on the time frame and it was a bit unfair on the club and um, and after I was coming off contract so it was a bit unfair on them signing me up and not knowing when I could play next and I could be out for the whole year. And yeah. it just, they just didn't know. And with that, the footy career was over. So Timari returned home to regroup and rebuild. I'm always someone that tries to find the positives and stuff and even though I had to finish up in the NRL when I, when I did, I was straight away thinking about straight away beginning. I was on the phone to my brothers on um, what kind of breeze we're going to cross and what yeah. paths I need to, you know, to start going. And I think if you dwell on it too much, then you start getting in dark places. I was lucky I've, I've got Tao to call home because um, there's so much stuff that I enjoy doing that you know keeps keeps me sane like beginning. Pig hunting, fishing, getting in touch with the land. He was back doing what he loves. Yeah, it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my time I had off back home. So I sort of moved over here when I was um, 16, 17, and I was just getting into um, you know, being able to do stuff by myself, you know, pig hunting by myself. Yeah. So I was just starting to enjoy all that kind of stuff, and I had to move over here and follow the, the league journey. Um, I got to get my own dogs going, my own yeah. pig hunting dogs, and. Um, I suppose you don't, uh, unless you're a pig hunter, you don't know how much time and effort gets put into to doing that kind of stuff. Little stuff like getting up on the back of the truck. And, you know, I had two years to try and get my dogs to catch some pigs. And, Your dogs and, must uh, miss you. Yeah, uh, I miss them, I think, a lot more than I, they miss me. Te Mairi is grounded in Te Ao Māori and is from a proud Māori-speaking whānau. I heard there's more Māori here than in uh, Aotearoa, right? Yeah, probably. They're everywhere, <laughs> but here in Gold Coast, they're yeah. everywhere. That's where everyone moves to. Yeah, at home it was all real. Yeah. Uh, so once you got to school, it was, it was all real too, so... Uh, my English, once I got to high school, when I went to Hamilton Boys High, wasn't, wasn't too flash. But um, it's lucky you get um, your credits and stuff if you do Māori. It was cool being able to um, do all that. You probably don't appreciate it at the time, but looking back at it now, I, I certainly do. Being able to speak it every day, and especially when you get home. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it rolls off the tongue good. And then when you don't speak it for a while, you know, I come over here and, and I hadn't spoken it for a while, and then my mum say stuff. You know what you want to say, but you can't put the words together properly. But being able to, to have that, being able to speak it at home, and, and all my, my little brothers and sisters and stuff talk it too, so no, it, it's pretty cool. I guess the one thing a lot of Māori get a little bit frustrated with is how the boys' names are pronounced. Yeah. How do we say your name? Tamori. Tamori. Te. Te. 
Yeah, how do you deal with that? It's, it's probably lucky my last name's Martin, so yeah. they get that. I think they can get that right. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It is. I suppose it could be frustrating yeah. hearing it, hearing it pronounced wrong. But you, I've, I've tried to correct people on how to say it. They do give it a crack. Yeah. And it's just it's just real hard. It, it, it really is hard for some some Aussies to roll their R's. You know, yeah. it's mighty. But as long as they're giving it a crack yeah. and trying to, you're not not you know, disrespectfully saying it. Um, it's all good. He got his big break on the Australian scene as a teenager. But I only got the opportunity because I had a, I had a family member that. Um, my auntie that worked at Kiba Park that sort of made me come over for open trial and you know some people don't really get that kind of opportunity. My, my, my dad was as soon as he heard it he, he you know, sent me over and you know, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to have much money and, and come over here. And Do you feel like when you run out there sometimes you're running it for all the boys and the girls and the whanau back home? There's a lot of good players that don't make the NRL eh? For my, my two older brothers are better players than I am, way better. Yeah. They just didn't get the opportunity that, that I got. You know, they, they went to Raglan and done the surfing. Yeah. They enjoyed the surfing and I stayed at Hamilton Boys and, and enjoyed the rugby. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how much talent there is and yeah, how much players sort of get left out just because of the opportunity that they don't get. Yeah. And um, like I said, I, I hope the New Zealand Rugby League really grows the game because there's so much potential. After spending time back home recovering from the brain injury, Te Mairi took the calculated risk of playing club footy, and it wasn't long before the NRL came calling. I got the opportunity to um, play for my local team, Tarot All Steelers, yeah. um, last year, and yeah, it went, it went pretty good. Yeah. Um, had a few games, and then we had a got to play got to play for Waikato and the reps, and was on TV, so I got a few eyes watching me over that game and. Uh, my manager rang me up yeah. after, just not long after that, saying if I was keen to give it a crack again, and got all the scans and all that kind of stuff um, sorted out. And once the once the specialist sort of said that I could, um, the, the the chance of me getting that brain bleed again was like anyone else getting it. Then mm. that was, it was all go from there, and I got the opportunity to come over here with, with the Brisbane Broncos, which is pretty pretty cool. Just last month, the Brisbane Broncos gave him the chance to play again. His one-year development contract is now looking more like becoming a multi-year signing. After 1,094 days out of the game, Te Mairi returned to the NRL last month. And the Broncos haven't lost the game since his inspirational return. How proud are you like, to get back to playing in the NRL because you're up at the Cowboys there, was having headaches and migraines, then you got a brain bleed and it's like your career is over and done with and now you're back in the NRL, it's incredible. It is, um, I sort of got to pinch myself because you don't really, you know, you don't really... Appreciate. It's your brain! Yeah, I know, it's not, it's not very big. <laughs> at the moment I'm just taking everything in, um, I'm really soaking everything in at the moment because, um, you know, I know how quickly it can be gone. Yeah. So I'm just taking it week by week at the moment and, and enjoying footy because, yeah, like, like 2019, it was, you know, I didn't think Bulldogs were going to be my last game and like that, it was gone. So soaking it all in and, and enjoying, you know, everything at the moment, whether it be fans, you know, taking photos of fans. Signing for TN Broncos. At the moment, firstly, is to try and re-sign and hopefully I can um, get enough money to buy a farm and live off the and land, live off the land and, and, and backs onto a big bush or something like that. So. That's sort of my, my next goal I want to try and do. 